Hello and welcome to Solo Travel with Darren. This is episode number 70. And today I'm going to be talking about um, English levels around the world. And before I start, I'll show you that I'm. this is being filmed today. I'm going to be putting this on my um, YouTube channel. And if you haven't been to my YouTube channel, it's Darren's Travel Tips on YouTube. Um, I'll leave a link in the description also for this podcast. But um, and so, yeah, you can see that I'm also recording the, the podcast also. And so let's get started. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about English levels. Um, when I first started traveling, um, I heard a lot of conf- conflicting uh, opinions on the world's level of English. A lot of people said that everybody in the world knows English because English is the language of the world. And then some people said, you know, people don't really know English. And definitely the further you go east when you're traveling, uh, people don't know English. And from what I found, I think it's a little bit closer to the people who people don't know English. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, it's I mean, first of all, learning a second language is hard. Um, I've mentioned a couple times in previous podcasts that during COVID, I started to learn a little bit of Russian. And I, it's amazing that people can learn second languages, um, how difficult it is. But nevertheless, um, but that's that. Um, so yeah, so when you travel, I mean, don't let the English levels um, prevent you from going anywhere. I mean, sure, no matter where you go, you'll be able to get around knowing English, especially like in the tourist spots, like when you go to um, any type of t- tours, like museums or attractions, anything like that. There's always going to be people who know English. Um, the, the hotels you go to, the airports, train well, not trains, but airports, hotels, things everywhere. Everybody who interacts with tourists, world tourists, um, will probably know English almost n- no matter where you go. I mean, I've been, um, I think, is mo- the most exotic place I think I was was Azerbaijan in Baku. Um, and, and they knew English fine in the hotel and... Uh, um, like some restaurants, things like that. Um, a lot of places they know you'll again, the staff or whatever, they, the, the staff probably needs to learn English as a requirement to get a job there. I mean, from what I can tell, um, I remember when I was way year, many years ago, I was coming back from somewhere. I was in Belgium and I was talking to this person at the, uh, coffee who was serving coffee at the coffee shop. And that person, she said she knew eight different languages, um, and I just thought that was incredible, especially later on after like trying to learn a second language myself. It just that is just absolutely incredible. But um, so I think learning, as, I think knowing English is probably a requirement for getting a lot of jobs. I know it's requirements for uh, Russia for um, Aeroflot, the Russian airline, for the flight attendants to get hired on hired hired there. I know that they need to learn English. Uh, I have a friend who um, is a uh, the flight att- who used to be a flight attendant for Aeroflot, and um, she knew ling- English, and her ing- English was actually pretty good um, from from Moscow. Um, but anyways, so yeah, so the you, when you travel, you will come into contact with English speakers, foreigners who speak English um, at all the tourist spots. After the tourist spots, then it's kind of touch and go. Um, like I said, if you go to restaurants or if you see people who, well, let me put it this way. If you, if you go to Western Europe, you're going to be more likely to find people who speak some English than you do if you go to Eastern Europe. Um, however, well, again, the people in Western Europe, they interact with English speakers and they use it more um, than the people in like Eastern Europe. And when I say Eastern Europe, I mean, say, Poland East, um, you know, I guess uh, Czech Republic and Hungary and uh, those places are kind of Central Europe, but um, and then Eastern is kind of Ukraine, Russia, um, back when we could go to Ukraine and Russia, um, Belarus, all those places. But um, the, the farther you go that way, the less English people are going to be speaking. And but even if you come back to the West, though, I mean, I've been surprised at some of the places where the English levels were so low. Um, I'll never forget asking somebody where something was in Stockholm, in Sweden, and they didn't speak English. 
and this is Stockholm, Sweden. It's one of the most Western countries in the world. Um, it's completely modern, completely first world. Um, and most of the people there did speak English for sure, but more than you would expect did not know, did not know English. Um, and that, that was surprising. And also in, um, in Spain, when I was in Madrid and in Sevilla, um, more people, there wasn't a lot of English speakers, that's for sure. I mean, again, at your hotel and things like that, yes, but, you know, just people on the streets and the malls, things like that. Um, very few of the Spanish girls knew, knew English. Um, so that's, you know, and that was surprising because, you know, Spain, it's first world, it's, you know, Spain, France, Switzerland, Russia, Germany, all those places. You would think, again, as an American who doesn't know anything, you would think that they know English, but they really don't um, as far as that goes. And, and, and when I say that they don't know it, I think the whole, not the whole world, but a lot of the world learn English in grade school and maybe even high school. Um, and, but that doesn't mean that they know it though. That's kind of like, we, you know, we have like a Spanish, re I had a Spanish requirement in high school, um, but I, I don't know Spanish and I, you know, it's so just because you take it in school doesn't mean that you know it, um, and doesn't mean that you ever use it, you know, after you get your grades in school. So, um, that's kind of misleading. And again, once you start traveling, you'll see that it, you know, the English levels are pretty low. And, uh, and, and it, I, guess, I guess it makes sense. I mean, a lot of people overseas, they've never, they have no reason to know English. Um, I mentioned before in one of the earlier podcasts that, you know, you'd go to these clubs and these bars in, in Moscow back in, what was that, 2019, and these girls didn't know zero, they knew zero English. Um, and again, because they just had no reason to. Everything that they want is done in Russian. It's all done in Russia. It's, it, you know, same thing kind of in Ukraine too. It's like all the girls in Ukraine, um, they have no incentive to learn English for the most part. I mean, unless they're in like a, either an English tutor or if they teach Russian or Ukrainian um, or unless they deal with foreigners or like as a tour guide, things like that, they have no, they have no reason to. Um, everything is everything is given for them, you know, in their own country. Um, so, but but again, and then kind of going on for for you guys anyway. Um, if you're talking to girls or if you're meeting foreign girls, um, obviously, if the girl is trying to, if she likes you and she's trying to talk to you in English and her English sucks, um, that means she likes you, obviously, right? Um, that's because she's standing there and she's trying to, you know, interact with you, whatever. And that, that, that's a good sign for you. So, um, keep that in mind, guys. Um, and, and vice versa. I mean, if some girl tells you she doesn't know English and then, you know, 30 seconds later, she's speaking like perfect English to somebody, then obviously she didn't like you. And so that's the, you know, that's the flip side of that. But again, more times than not, um, girls are embarrassed about their bad English and so you know they'll say you know so so you ask them if they speak English they'll say so so um, and that means none at all really but but they'll try and so that's good for you but um, but again it, it was kind of surprising to me that they were that the ling English levels were so low um, all around the world um, I was pleasantly surprised on the flip side though I was surprised on um, how m many people knew English in Serbia when I was in Belgrade this past May. Uh, it was very surprising that almost everybody spoke perfect English. And again, for the same reason, it's kind of like, why? Because, you know, they're way down there in the Balkans, um, 6,000 miles away from the U.S. or, where, or wherever else speaks English. Well, I guess from London or England would be closer. But um, they have really no reason to speak English, but I would say... 90% of the people I came into contact with spoke, you know, really good English. And again, I was speaking to, you know, just regular people at the mall or on the street, things like that, not necessarily in the tourist places. And they, everybody I, I talked to, they, they knew English. Um, um, which is interesting because next door in uh, Croatia, uh, when I was in Croatia back in 2019 or 2018, something like that, um, there was a lot of people who did, did not know English, and Croatia is, you know, right next door 
to uh, Serbia. They were all part of the old Yugoslavia. Um, but they didn't, they didn't know that much English either. Um, I mean, again, you could get around super, super easy and every, everything that you needed to do, um, people were speaking English. And you could always find somebody who speaks English if you have a problem. But it, the actual levels on the streets were, um, were pretty low. Which reminds me also, um, when I was in Ukraine last summer, I was in Kharkiv for a month. And I was, and, and nobody really, I mean, again, the English levels were kind of hit and miss in Kharkiv, which is, everybody knows now, it's in the east of Ukraine, about 20 miles from the Russian border. And back before the war, um, there was a lot of Russian, there was a lot of Russian speaking Ukrainians in that, in that area. Uh, in fact, I think almost everybody spoke Russian um, in eastern Ukraine, which incidentally, I'll uh, go back to in um, uh, 2018 when I went to Ukraine. I remember I was in Poland and I was talking to these guys in one of the bars, or whatever, and they were talking about Kiev, Ukraine, Kiev, Ukraine, Kiev, Ukraine. Um, and they were saying, you know, if you're over here in this region of the world, you should go to Kiev. And so I was like, okay, fine. So, yeah, so I did. And I just remember thinking, um, on, I went online, I think, and people were talking about how everybody in Kiev spoke uh, Russian. And so I was like, okay, so maybe I'll learn a few words in Russian and then go to Kiev. And then maybe three days before I was supposed to go over there, you know, everybody's saying, um, I think I saw something about the people in Lviv in the west of Ukraine, and they were saying that people in Lviv only speak Ukrainian and nobody speaks Russian, and that you need to speak Russian when, I mean, you need to speak Ukrainian when you come there or whatever. So then I was like worried, so then I learned a few things in Ukrainian. And um, so then when I got to Kiev in, I think it was July or June of 2018, I got there, I got on the ground in Kiev, it will Kiev, and uh, I keep saying Kiev and Kiev. It's basically the Kiev is the way I guess Russian speakers speakers say say the city, and then Kiev is kind of the way that Ukrainians say it, um, from what I understand. And so that's why you probably hear in the news now about the war. Everybody's saying Kiev instead of Kiev like they used to, but um, but anyway. So when I got to Kiev, it was. Everybody was speaking Russian. I mean, everybody was speaking Russian back in 2018. I don't think I, I, I didn't hear one person speaking Ukrainian. Um, and I think maybe at that point in time, all the government, uh, the government documents, things like that, those are all in Ukrainian. Um, and that might have been that case back then, too. It is definitely now it is. Um, but back then, I think it was also the Ukrainian was like the official language. But on the streets, the only thing you would hear is, is Russian. And so, and then when I went back to, like I said, back to Ukraine in uh, 2021, um, it was kind of funny because I heard more Ukrainian then. And then, and this was before the war. Um, I'm sure now it's probably all Ukrainian. But um, everybody spoke, well, not everybody, but there's a lot more Ukrainian than there was before. Um, so anyway, so anyways, going, my, my point originally was that when I was there last in last July, I went, I was at a, uh, a uh, what was it called, the something croissants, I can't remember the name of the croissant place, it was a super popular croissant place in, uh, in uh, Ukraine, in Kharkiv, and I went in there, and I was standing there, and everything's in either Ukrainian or Russian, and I'm looking at the board, trying to order just like a ham and, a ham and cheese croissant, and I couldn't figure out I couldn't remember like the word for like ham in Russian and so I'm sitting there I'm trying to figure out like which one of those sandwiches I wanted and the person who the cash register girl um, she didn't speak any English at all and so I'm trying to tell her in Russian what I wanted and uh, we were getting like nowhere or whatever and then some girl maybe 15 years old came up behind and she's like she um, asked me or asked the girl if she could help and she spoke perfect English and helped me order my, my croissant or whatever. And so, again, it was kind of like, so there is people who speak English and there are people who can help you out. 
um, in a in a jam or whatever if you're completely lost. And again, that's Ukraine. Um, you well, know, you well, yeah, that's Ukraine. And in that, um, the English levels in Ukraine are very low. You know, apart from the the tourist areas, but the further you go back west, like I say, if you're in France or you're in England or well, obviously England, but if you're in France or Spain or Italy or anything like that, um, there's going to be more. There's going to be more English spoken. But again, th- I guess the whole point of this po- podcast was that um, don't think that the world knows English. I mean, even though kind of like all business is kind of done in English, um, just like the world kind of all uses dollars at some level. Um, but it's still like, like I said, people, you know, across the globe, a lot of people don't have any interest in learning English because they don't need it. Um, like I said, you know, I know a lot of like English tutors or, or Russian language tutors. I know a lot of tour guides. Um, there's a lot of girls who like foreigners or whatever. And so they all know English um, better than the average person. But again, that's kind of like the exception. And uh, so keep that in mind. But, you know, again, if you're this is your first time traveling, um, don't let the the language barrier stop you at all. Um, again, you, you're going to be fine knowing English. And, you know, it's always nice to know a few words in the foreign language. I mean, I always say learn hi, bye and thank you. And, and really, that's it. I mean, you tell somebody thank you after they give you something in a foreign language, they'll be happy. And that's it. And you want to you want to. You want to be a good ambassador. You want to um, make people like American tourists or like, like Western tourists and all that stuff. Um, so, anyways, hope that helps. Um, that was an issue for me when I first started traveling. I was worried, kind of like, how would I communicate? I was worried about how I communicate on the plane um, if I was, you know, trying to listen to the um, instructions, things like that. Um, but again, it's not an issue. I think I told you before in the airplane anyway Um, and even I think on the trains um, they always repeat the announcements in English after they say it in their original language so um, keep that in mind but you'll be fine like I said if this is your first time traveling overseas um, you'll be fine knowing English and um, go go do it so um, if this is your first time here if your first time listening to my podcast if you would please leave me a review um, at the end of this at solo mail travel doc, uh, solo mail travel podcast. And it's in I Apple podcast. It's in Spotify, um, everywhere else that you listen, you listen to podcasts. And then if you're interested about more information, if you're a guy and you're interested in more information about solo travel, um, grab my free handout at my website. My free web, my free handout is solo mail travel. The, uh, Frequently asked questions, seven frequently asked questions that I have a handout, just a free handout that I give out, um, basically saying some of the information that I've learned in the last 16 years of traveling um, that'll help you. So um, thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you next Thursday.